ever collapse? Why is one not allowed to ask why did it happen? It's the same thing. The Zionist media want to avoid that somebody in that context might point his finger at Israel. In Europe, it's entirely different. The British, the French, the Germans, the Danes, the Spanish, immediately after 11 September, said that terrorism grows out of abject poverty and abject injustice. And that there will be terrorism as long as there is such poverty and such injustice. The German federal president, Johannes Rau, in my view, put it best a few days after September 11 by saying, peace is the fruit of justice. If you turn this around, terrorism is the fruit of injustice. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I don't think that there is any justification whatsoever for terrorism. Islam allows defense against attacks from the outside. Moderate defense. And it allows resistance against despotism inside. But even for justified defense towards aggression or towards against suppression, terrorist means are never allowed. You can fight the police, you can fight the military, but you cannot take innocent people hostage or target them. You cannot use mass weapons of mass destruction in a just cause either. But this being said, the Europeans are quite aware that without the monumental injustice being done to people in Chechnya, in Kashmir, and above all in Palestine, what happened in America may not have happened. And unless the United States intervenes to prevent the ongoing anti-Palestinian Holocaust in Palestine, more terrorism may happen. <clears throat> It's not bourbon whiskey that has affected my voice, I assure you. <clears throat> What the American public normally does not realize is to which extent the United States government is involved in Israel to a point where the United States is considered the only ally of Israel and Israel the best ally of the United States that the United States is supporting Israel to the tune of 4.1 billion dollars a year which is an absurd amount when you consider that no other country receives even a fraction of that, even India with a billion people. When you see, like last night on, on television, how an, uh, Israel, um, Palestinian installations are being attacked by Apache helicopters and F-16 fighter planes, well, where are these weapons made? Where do they come from? Under any legal system, I studied both German and American law and Islamic law by myself, you find the same rule. Somebody who empowered somebody else to do wrong must prevent him from doing wrong 
and to remaining to remain passive makes him guilty. One can re become guilty by doing nothing if one has a responsibility to act. Nor do I want to give the impression that I want to see Israel disappear. The Palestinians in their majority had come to an acceptance of Israel in order to coexist with the Palestinian state in the territory. That was much harder for the Palestinians than for the Germans to give up East Germany, Silesia and Pomerania to Poland because after all we had caused a war and we had lost it. But the Palestinians had nothing to do with World War II. They had nothing to do with the Holocaust. Now, if one had settled the Jewish people in Germany, everybody would have understood that as a recompensation. But to make the Arabs pay for the German crimes is hard to explain to anybody. <clears throat> Against that background, I was so touched on September 11 when I recalled what I had heard my neighbors say during the final session of the annual meeting of the Islamic Society of North America in Chicago on 3rd September. My neighbor was Paul Findlay. Paul Findlay was for 22 years a House of Representatives member from Illinois. And during that meeting, he read from an open letter which he had sent to President Bush Jr. And I quote it verbally. He said, Mr. President, the United States is at war with the Arab nation. At war, he said. This was 3rd September, not after 11. And he continued and said, Can it be that a nation that fought for its independence against a colonial power today supports another colonial power in its efforts to deprive a people of its independence? This was almost prophetic. <clears throat> the question remains on the table. Do religions bear responsibility from time to time or, or all the time? for violence. If you look at the major aim of any religion, you would say easily no. But you cannot deny, uh, I am now talking about the Catholic religion because I used to be Catholic before and I know that religion quite well. It cannot be denied that in certain contexts religions may be directly responsible for violence. Even a religion that calls itself the religion of love. Now I give you an example, but I will not spare Islam. The story of what happened in paradise at the time of Adam and Eve is very different in the Quran and in the Bible. According to the Bible, Eve is entirely and solely responsible for the whole disaster. She seduced St. Paul took it up and said it's better not to marry. 
And when in the Middle Ages two million women were burned as witches, also in Massachusetts, this cannot be divorced from this strand of bedeviling Eve and with her, her whole gender in the Christian world. There have never been similar excesses against women in the Muslim world. Take another case. <clears throat> the Catholic Church, and this was of course the church until there was a Lutheran church and the Calvinist church, almost from the beginning defined a doctrine called in Latin extra ecclesiam nulla salus 